Welcome to Devon Dragon Radio. I'm your host, ML Rootstruck. I'm here with my special guest and artist, Jordan Lee Carpet. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be here. How's it going? Now, now you're a little bit different from who I normally have on the show. You are an art artist. So what got you into the world of art? And I've been looking at your gallery and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I see things that I need on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, it, I mean, oh, goodness, I started, oh, what's 10 years ago, about yeah, 11 years now. Um, and kind of how it all started was a, um, just trying to find odd jobs here and there. And then um, that's through like some modeling gigs. Then I just found photography. And when I found photography, I was like, oh, this is it. I was searching for what I was going to do after school. And when photography hit me, I just knew. That's what I want to do. Um, it was just kind of this feeling in my bones that this was like, okay, I have to pick up a camera and start just experimenting. And yeah, I mean, sure. It's been a long journey since then. Um, so basically I started off assisting uh, commercial photographers, learning the trade and I just, I was finding a, a conflict slightly of interest that I wanted to create work that wasn't for other people and that's what you do in the commercial work, but work for myself, work that meant something that uh, would evoke emotion in people that would, you know, change their consciousness, their way of thinking. And when they look at it, they go, people stopped and would go, oh, oh this has just made me feel something. It's made me um, view the world differently. It's en enlightened me in a, in, a, in a new way. And that's why I kind of just went, okay, this that's what I want to do. That's what I want people to feel. And then I just started to create work for myself or work that expressed those emotions and, and feelings that I had inside. And that was the first part of my transition and going from um, a commercial photographer, advertising photographer through into the art world. Um, and that, that that's just kind of been a process and journey that I've been kind of flip flopping back and forth because um, the, the work I produced after that, um, I shortly moved to Dubai after, and then I just um, kind of just got inundated with commercial work left, right, and center. So that just kind of took off on its own thing. Right. And when you, this is what people don't understand. When you're doing two things, one is always fighting the other one for attention. Yeah, it is. A, it's, it's about a balance for me, really. It was kind of finding this middle ground. Um, you know that to keep your soul happy and to to pay your bills that was kind of what i was juggling backwards and forwards um and now i've kind of let go of the whole commercial side because that just uh, the more the more and more i did it the the less i wanted to do it and the more i wanted to just create my own artwork and create stuff that people can hang on their walls for years to come and just look at it and just go i love this like I said, I've been going through some of your pieces. I'm like, oh, I want this. I don't want that. I have to hit, get a bigger house because now I'm going to have art on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd love to be in your house, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure they will look great when I get to where I'm going. So it, it, it's, I love art. And the pieces you have is not just... Uh, landscape or architecture you actually have things that are part sound and motion yeah well I mean for me it's always been hard to fit into like this little box we always want to put people in boxes okay you do landscapes or you paint abstract paintings or, or whatever but uh, for me I battled with that um uh, for me, it was more about thinking and thought patterns behind everything, the, the invoking of emotion rather than just subject matter. So when I started this project, The Power of Sound, it was really um, an experiment at first to see if I, could, if I could do it. And then it was kind of, what was it showing me? What was it doing? And the, the more I started to do it, the more I realized that there were these little nuances in, uh, the, in the universe and in ourselves that I, I was really that realizing that they were coming out in the images because no two images would ever be the same every every eruption and it's sound changing into kinetic energy it's every eruption gives a different well the characteristics were funny enough very similar but the entire encompassing image was completely different depending on how much paint i used the the frequencies the colors so i could 
control certain things, but other things I just like had to leave up to the universe to decide. Um, when creating these, and and if you look at the site, you'd think that these pieces of paint were massive, but in reality, they were only about an inch or two tall. So I was working on such a micro scale that any small nuance that I did, even the changes in air pressure, I mean, I started off in winter and ended off in summer, the changes in air pressure affected how the paint reacted to the sound, even the floorboards that I had on. Because when I started this, it was in my my garage which had concrete floors mm -hmm. and the way the speaker would move up and down and reverberate would cause the paint to act in a certain way and then when I moved inside it was on wood floors and that caused the paint to act in a complete different manner so I had to change the way I was working to kind of get what I needed but you know all these all these variables all work together to create something that happens faster than you can blink and when you know, the whole process I had to do, it had to be automated because it happened so fast that before, there was no chance I could ever take it. The react, my reaction times would just be like insane. I'd be a superhuman. So I uh, automated the whole process so that when the sound erupted and came out, camera would flash and take the image and I'd be left to wonder what, what would come out. So it was quite a um, setting up the process and then just letting see what would happen. It's kind of like the laws of the universe. You know, we can't be a copy of another person. We are our own holistic selves left and we can't um, emulate other people's lives because all the variables in our lives are complete different. We're different people. So it makes us look at the world differently and go, okay, well, if I can't be a copy, what can I bring? What's unique to me? What's my true self and true calling? And what, what can I do that will make the world a different place? Right. We cannot immolate ourselves to mimic another person. We have to be our own self. We see this in art. Art is a great medium to make you think about this. You cannot mimic something you see. You have to have your own voice. Yeah, and I think it's important that everyone has their own voice. I mean, we all have our opinions on, on, on in, in anything, but I think it's more about how do you convey your opinion to other people that may be different to someone else but it makes them listen it you know it's it's sowing that seed of of another thought that could change you a little bit or it could change you a lot that's that's the beauty of art right you can i love you have your artists that do paints um pastels or watercolors or use stones and you know different types of medium to invoke a response from their audience it doesn't matter what that response is they're invoking a response and it's going to be different for each person that comes across you cannot get the same response from 10 people it's not going to happen yeah that, that, that's the magic of it um it, each piece is personal to you and i think when people are, are buying art for their home or, or they starting a collection or whatever that you know you can't just look at the investment of it of going okay well i'm going to buy this painting and in 10 years time it's going to be worth so much or in 30 years time it's going to be so much i mean it's hanging on your wall you got to look at it every day and go i love this because of x y and z and funny enough um i found that even with my own images and just going to my friends houses and that that images that i look at or artworks my opinion of them changes over time as as i evolve my opinion of them changes and my thought process when i look at them changes um i think you know the one thing about this this whole pandemic is that you know art galleries are closed and seeing seeing artwork in its true big glorious form is is hard to come by but you know when you look at it on a phone it's it's all small and it's quickly just it's quick to just you know scroll through and to look at the next thing but when an image is on a wall or it's big or it's any artwork is present for, you know, more than our usual 10 or 15 seconds, we actually like really stop and look at it and, and notice the nuances, the differences. And, you know, that that's where I think all the magic starts to happen. It does. Um, I currently don't have art on my walls, but I'm getting ready to get art back on my walls again. And it changes every year, every six months because you evolve as a person sometimes you have an evolving art collection and sometimes you have a stagnant that you go 
oh, I love this piece. I can't live without it. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing when you're taking pictures of your family. You have pictures that are there forever, and you have pictures that you change up every year with as your kids grow. It depends on where you're at and what emotion you want on your walls. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it, you know, what's funny is that uh, when I go to certain people's houses, they'll have their perfect images on their house of, of their family and their kids. And then when, when I look at our walls, it's all the funny moments in between those perfect pictures that cover our walls. And, you know, it, it's each person to their own, what they want to display in their house and, and what they need. Um, and, and I think it's all about, you know, what kind of emotion do you want to surround yourself with the whole time? Is it your family doing all the funny little quirky things that you like? Or is it the, the more prim and proper stuff? What do you prefer? And I think that it shows your, your personality. I think that's what art really does is when you walk into someone's house and you see their art, you go, it sums them up in such a better way than what can be done just you know, just meeting them haphazardly when it's, you know, it's their statement. It's who they are. It's like getting, when you see artwork in someone's house, it's like getting led into their mind a bit. You can see their opinions, who they are, what they believe in. And that's what I love about it. Exactly. It's getting into the person's mindset because are they the type of person that has the funny stuff? Are they the type that wants these serene, landscapes and just look out into nature even if they live in the city what do they actually want in their life you can see it in their art even if it's just a photograph that they took themselves yeah no i completely agree look when when i lived in dubai i always just wanted images of trees and and green grass and blue sky and the you know the stuff of south africa that i loved and then since being back for now for the past year in South Africa it's just like oh like I remember those good times in the desert that we had when the stars were out and were in the sand and you know I never would have had that kind of image hanging in my wall in Dubai because that's just you know out my backyard but it reminds me of it yeah it reminds me of that those past good times that I used to that I loved and I cherished and which you know helped me evolve and I think it's always important for us as humans to remember you know where we came from and you know because you as we go through always we, we always forget these little life lessons or these little turning points and I think it's always good to have those little subtle reminders that to show you oh yeah you know I'm evolving I am changing I, I'm growing and uh, that's the beauty of life is that it's forever changing it is and it's something that we no matter if we live 10 miles from our childhood home or 3,000, we're always going to carry something with us and we can take art as a way to carry those memories with us. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's kind of just like, yeah, a little memory bank that you get. And mm -hmm. that, that's the beauty for every person. It's different. It might be the same photo, but for everyone, it's a different memory. It's, right. you know, that great time of mom or, that that funny time my brother did something and or it's that emotion of oh I left home and I went to the big city so to speak to make it and you know that's where I came from and look where I am now and look where I'm going so each piece has its own yeah it's a story it's your life story and your little snapshots as you go along the way so what are you working on now well um funny story Funny enough, um, I've been traveling around South Africa because, you know, coming from such a commercial background, I'd developed all these kind of um, predispositions of what I should create, how I should create, um, and certain processes that I'd put in place. And, and kind of, it, it had made me kind of fall out of love with the process because I was always um, managing things that I don't want to manage. And now that I'm doing my own artwork, I just was like, well, I'm going on this trip. I decided to go on a trip around South Africa and just capture whatever happened to have whatever I decided what, what was good. I wasn't going to like um, hold myself back and go, no, that I'm judging myself because if I take this photo, that that's not really me or I didn't know what I was wanting. So I was like, well, I'm going to do this trip and I'm just going to explore and I'm going to try and fall in love with the process again of continuously working day in and day out to to get it done um 
and this has just changed everything that's taken the pressure off it's um it's made me think of the images differently and um I, along this trip and just before i was going well you know this is a a great um overview to go into something with but what's something a bit more finite that i could kind of see what i can carve out along the way um and i've been doing some some research on the tree of life um and and what that invokes and what I found fascinating and what I've always found fascinating is cultures and the tree of life I found is fascinating. It's from, it's in, you know, Judaism to the native Indians and everything in between. And there's all these, so many cultures that all resonate around this one idea. So I was going, okay, well, that's a, that's a fascinating idea. How can I, how can I bring this uh, into an image or into a series of images and, so I was like, okay, well, I have this idea of, and I've had this idea for a long time of trees in a certain way. And I thought, okay, let me see what I get along this trip. And along the way, it's kind of evolved from just being um, parts of certain trees in an abstract way to kind of um, more lands, what would people would consider landscape works. Um, but it's also knowing that, okay, there's a time and a place for everything and, and the I'm busy marking down places because I know in six months time that tree is going to look great or in three months time it's going to be good because as we've been traveling around now the, um, it's not the greatest time of year down here it's just before summer so the rain is just about to come um, right. and the farmers are burning fire breaks left right and center so there's not a blue sky you've ever seen um, mm -hmm. everything's all hazy in that but um, on Friday funny enough as we we're about to go out I dropped my camera and like and it broke so not I hope oh, it's not too of bad. course the yeah, one thing you need is your tools you break <laughs> yeah exactly and I mean it, it when I look back it's such a clumsy way of me doing it and, and you know after assisting for so many years that should have never happened but when you have assistance you get lazy and and things just mm -hmm. happen and as I just slung it over my my back, it, the camera just fell out, and now now I'm up in Joburg at my sister's place. Just, well, I mean, we're only meant to be here in like a month to, or so time, but we had to drive up because the only service center is up here in Joburg. So it was like, okay, pack everything up, off we go, let's get it fixed, and and then head back on the road. But you know, everything happens for a reason. So right. I'm just going, okay, well, you know. There were fire breaks, the sky wasn't blue, the conditions weren't great. So maybe in a week or two when I get it back, everything will be what it should be. And I can go get the images that I really wanted. Right. Sometimes it's the universe's way of saying, hey, you're not supposed to be here yet. <laughs> so it just happens. I mean, you're going to have traffic pictures when you get them. And it was going to, it had to line up in the universe's time. Yeah, exactly. You know, this this whole process of, of kind of um, not rediscovery, but reworking how I do it is kind of just going, I was always a person of like, okay, I'm hardworking, I'm driven, and I'm just going to, you know, drive this home. I'm going to get, I'm going to get to my finish line in my Corvette as fast as I can. And now I've gone, wait, let me just, you know, take a station wagon. Let me just relax as I go along, enjoy the ride. And, you know, I'm going to get there. And when I get there, I get there. And, you know, th there's a beauty in that. It's um, not leaving things up to chance, but it's just letting things unfold rather than forcing them to happen. And that's the way we need to be. I mean, that's what art is for. It's not to hurry up and get it done. It's actually to enjoy the process. And once you enjoy the process, then your audience enjoys it so much more. I completely agree. I mean, <laughs> my process for the power of sound, I mean, if anyone had to watch me, they'd think it's the most boring activity on earth. Cause uh, I mean, it would take me like 20 minutes to set up a shot. And then in one instant it's gone and it's like, okay, what did I get? Something good, something bad. All right. Start again. And you just go at it for months and months. And I mean, obviously you get faster and you learn the tricks as you go, but it, it really is about falling in love with the process and, you know, you're going to make mistakes no matter what you do. Nobody's perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And 
you know sometimes those beautiful those mistakes are, are your best photos that it's the beauty in the in the chaos sometimes it is some of the best works of art were accidents if you think about it 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 wasn't meant to be how the artist pictured it but it came out and that's the piece that everyone loves yeah and i think that that's sometimes quite interesting it's like what why what 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 made that piece stand out was it you know is it the what the artist intended in you know in our human brain or was it was was it their soul coming through and that's what really made the image and that's what people resonate with because i think you know art you can excuse me you can only look at it so much with what i what i think like our human brain and our soul is completely different and mm -hmm. when we love something and our brain says oh, i don't know but your soul says it you you go with what your soul feels like you I mean, when you buy a magic, when you buy a new house, you know, you're not going, okay, does it tick all these boxes? Because you can go to the house and it ticks all the boxes, but you hate it. But other houses, oh, it might not tick all the boxes, but your soul just resonates with it. It just mm -hmm. feels like home. And I think when people see certain images, they go, oh, that just feels like me. And I want that. Right. It's not just when you buy a house, you walk in the house and you know immediately if this house is something you can see yourself being in. It's the same yeah. thing with art. When you look at it, it may be, resonate with you. Oh, I want this. Or what am I looking at? It's the same process. Yeah. Subconsciously. Yes, yeah, subconsciously, it definitely is. Um, and, you know, people often, I think, associate a, a lot a lot of time, you know, I mean, we think of a house as an expensive purchase, but I think people also think of that as art. You know, you buy some, you're not buying it to, to use it once. You, you're buying it for the five years. You're buying it for the 10 years. So you, you want something that really you know, makes your heart sing. Every time you look at it, it makes you feel joy or sadness or whatever emotion that you want. Every time you look at it, it just brings that out of you. And it, it changes your day. It changes your mindset. And what, you know, you could have this incredible image that every time, if you come home from work and you've had a shit day, you look at it and you just go, Oh, no, now I know why I do this. Or it makes it better. It makes it easier. It, it, it can take away that pain and it can invoke emotion. It can invoke thought and can lead you to where otherwise you wouldn't have gone without it. Exactly. Now, we are almost out of time. So where can our viewers and our listeners find you? Okay, well, they can find me on Instagram journally garbage underscore art i'm on there i'm on facebook journally garbage photography um i'll be starting tiktok soon and as i go through my little travel adventures i'll be posting on there all the time to keep people updated um my website gets updated quite frequently i'd like to think um sometimes faster than others but i think after this trip it's going to be there's going to be a flood of images coming through and a flood of content that i think everyone's going to really, really enjoy. And on your website too, I do want to mention that you do have the virtual gallery, which is cool. And I was playing with it earlier. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I like it because, you know, it, it gives more of a, a, a 360 feel to it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see images by themselves, they can sometimes not make sense or they, uh, it gets diluted, so to speak. But when you, in the in that kind of space as best we can compared to a normal gallery you get to you see everything as a whole you see you see the wide view as well as the the up close and personal um and you know what's also cool on on that virtual gallery is um the the video that i have of the of the paint going up and down in super slow motion mm -hmm. so you know you get to see how the paint just morphs and twirls and reacts as as the sound waves go through which i think is so fascinating you know to see stuff that we could never see like 10 i mean 10 15 years ago we'd never see that but now with these new cameras you get to see these intricacies of how how the the you world pick works up more before. things with the newer cameras than you do with the old ones but at the same time it's so interesting to just watch things in slow motion and then you get to capture it as art. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's what people couldn't see, and I think that's what makes it fascinating. When when you see something that you couldn't see before, it it invokes that childhood curiosity that we all have in ourselves, and it makes you go, "Whoa, that that's different to how I thought it would be." It's mm -hmm. like, oh, 
look look at how it's how it's doing that what and it it just yeah and i think we all love to play with our our childhood curiosity it, it comes out whenever we whenever we want something new and you know I, when i do it anyway it, it brings me so much joy to discover something new and exciting and interesting that's completely different to what i would think it was it is and i love playing with paints i mean i was one of those kids that had the spinny thingy that you put drops of paint on and spins and creates stuff i was yeah. one of those kids <laughs> <laughs> that was my idea of art back then so well i think the idea of art's always changing and forever evolving but i mean i think art's all you know for anyone it's about the process really and 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 what it did for you because i'm sure you have such good memories of playing with it and and all your creations that you made and you know it's it's what brings us all joy it is and the sound of um the paintings on that one it was just connecting me back to a childhood memory and that's what art is for is connect us to something that invokes an emotion yeah and i i completely agree and i think you know, we, on this planet, we're so all interly connected. Every, every, there's a cause and reaction to every, every being, every part of us, every, oh, there's a lovely truck going past, every <laughs> thought of, and emotion, and all, we're all so tightly connected. And sometimes I think we feel like we're disconnected and, and we're, we're not one whole being on this planet. Um, and when all those little connections fire, and I think art helps with that, it, it makes us realize that, you know, we're all in this together and we're all feeling and, and being on this planet as, as one entity, so to speak, as one big organism. And um, it's all, uh, it's up to us to, to make it the best place that we can be and to connect with each other as best as we can so that it's better for everyone here. Well, I thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Lots of fun. And for all of our viewers, and our listeners.